brothers and sisters, welcome to day 14 of our 33-day journey to Eucharistic glory. Today we are speaking about the greatest of all saints after Jesus Christ, and that is our blessed mother Mary, Mary the mother of God. You know, scripture shows us the power of this woman's prayer in the Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In the last couple of days, we spoke about the power of holiness. We've been speaking about how saying yes to God can open up a floodgate. Well, I don't think it is as, as true for the Blessed Virgin Mary. That, that, that truth that saying yes to God can change the world is proof in the life of Mary. You know, sometimes we could put Mary in a bit of a kind of plaster Paris because we're accustomed to, you know, seeing statues and images of her that sometimes are a bit static and they're powerful to help us connect, right? And as Catholics, we never worship Mary. She's not God. We, we have respect for her. We venerate her because Jesus venerated her as his mother, who he loved so much and respected her. And as Catholics and as Christians, we have the heart of Jesus in baptism. He gave us his heart. So we must love what Jesus loves. So that's why the church, the true mark of the church Christ founded is always going to have devotion to Mary because the church is Jesus, is Jesus' very body, his heart. And so the heart loves his mother. And so we love Mary. And I was struck a couple of years ago, I think it's 2015, when National Geographic ran an article on the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the title was The Most Powerful Woman Who Ever Lived. And it, in the article, it went on to say that this woman in Nazareth, you know, Mary was a concrete human young girl in Nazareth, in the Middle East, in, his, in, in the Holy Land. And she said yes when, when something extraordinary happened to her, that the angel Gabriel, one of the great beings of the invisible world, was sent by God to Mary to bring the message of eternal life, to bring the message of the incarnation and to bring the word that when Mary said yes, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and informed in her womb was the creation of, of Jesus Christ in the sense that the word took flesh. Now Jesus always existed as the word, right? And John tells us in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word, the word in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So Jesus took flesh in Mary's womb at the yes of Mary. Now, in National Geographic, in the National Geographic article, it said that you know stadiums are named after Mary, flowers are named after Mary, countries are named after Mary, rivers are named after Mary, capital cities are named after Mary, uh, famous operas are done in her honor. How many billions of souls over the centuries have given honor to this woman and have called upon her for divine assistance? Even our Muslim brothers and sisters in, in Egypt go to a shrine to, 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 to venerate and to call upon the mother of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, this woman in her concrete yes transformed history. Her yes, the power of yes. And that's today's theme, the power of yes. And this brings us to the whole role of, of the consecration. Just for us to step back for a moment and realize that we are preparing for consecration a 33-day journey for Corpus Christi, where we are gonna consecrate our homes, our lands, our nation, to the most holy Eucharist, to, to Mary's son Jesus in the Eucharist. And consecration, just to remind ourselves, is to go to a deeper surrender to, to God. But in, in this case, it's a consecration to the Eucharist. It's a deeper surrender to the Eucharist. It means, you know, sacrificing more to, to attend Mass. It means sacrificing time to find time to go to be with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, to waste time before the tabernacle, to go and just sit and let Jesus love you, to adore Him, to go with the Word of God in your hands and ponder the Word while looking at Jesus, the Word in the Eucharist, and be like Mary. Mary is the model of adoration. She said yes, but she also is the model about how our life, when we say yes, can change other people's lives. Because Matthew Kelly in the book today points out about Mary, after she said yes, bears the real presence of Christ in her, and she brings Jesus in haste to Elizabeth. 
And so when we say yes to grace, when we say yes to going to sitting with Jesus in the tabernacle or receiving the Eucharist, more of divine grace is imprinted on our soul and we radiate more light into this world and our holiness will touch people's lives. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes Mother Teresa of Calcutta, as we studied her earlier on a few days of the week, she, she would go to huge conferences and would say very simple things. But because she was united to Jesus, because she was united to God, her words had power, her words had grace, her words had light. So brothers and sisters, it's so important for us in these days to, to realize the power of the Holy Eucharist to transform us and how our little yes could transform the world. I want to end on a quote just to recall what Pope St. John Paul from the last few days, what he said about the Eucharist. And he said this about adoration of the Eucharist. Through adoration, the Christian mysteriously contributes to the radical transformation of the world and to the sowing of the gospel. Anyone who prays to the Savior draws the whole world with him and raises it to God. Those who stand before the Lord are therefore fulfilling an eminent service. They are presenting to Christ all those who do not know him or, or are far from him. They keep watch in, their, in the presence of the Lord on their behalf. Brothers and sisters, we've ended one week of our journey. So excited to share the next journey with you. Don't forget to go to CatholicTT.org. And above all, please, please pray for the journey. Go visit the tabernacle. Beg Jesus for grace for this journey to transform our land and our world. God bless you.